Well, hello guys, Land Show TV here. I am about to watch the Hall of Presidents show. This is the Great Seal of the United States. I am going to give you a quick tour, as much as possible, of all the things in this little lobby. So, let's get into it. This is George Washington, the first president of the United States. About the origins and how the actual Walt Disney himself got to meet some of the presidents. The picture right there is of Walt Disney himself. The bust is of Abraham Lincoln. This is about the making of the Hall of Presidents. This is some of the clothing of the presidents. That's a pretty cool display. This is a pretty good display as well. This is very cool as well. This is President Andrew Jackson. This is Abraham Lincoln. Fun fact, I live about five minutes from Abraham Lincoln's birthplace. It is known as a national park. So it's pretty cool. This is James Moore. Then we have Franklin D. Roosevelt. Then we have Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter there. Excuse me. Pretty cool. We have these three as well. This is cool too. Walt's vision was to honor the nation by honoring the American presidency. It is 1783. And the smoke is clearing in the wake of the Revolutionary War. Over the course of eight grinding years, General George Washington has led a force of shopkeepers, farmers, and Native American allies to victory over the greatest military power in the world. A new nation has been born, independent and free. The founders must form a national government. In 1787, through months of passionate debate, they create a written constitution. For the country's highest office, they imagine something new in the history of the world. A leader not born to power like a king or queen. A leader who has not seized power through conquest. A leader not separate from the people, but elected by the people, from among the people. We, the people. This is a new idea, an American idea. The idea of a president. Tall, lanky, some say uncouth candidate from Illinois is a master of words at a time when speeches are printed in full for people to read. A house divided against itself cannot stand, he has said. With Lincoln's election, the house does indeed divide. Civil War. Eleven states secede from the Union. The war becomes a defining passage in the American story. The president's own inner strength and depth of character change the course of history. Lincoln had come up the hard way on the American frontier, desperately poor, with less than a year of formal schooling. His early years were scarred by tragedy, the death of his mother, his sister, his first love. He struggles with depression, but never loses his determination to rise above it. He once said he's driven by a desire to leave the world a little better place for having lived in it. Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, six months after one of the bloodiest battles of the war. 
the president dedicates a cemetery to the thousands of soldiers who died there in words we can never forget. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here, have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note, nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and the government of the people by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. 1929, the bottom fell out of the market. 12 million unemployed. The bread buyers and the suit. The result of the 1932 election of our When we elect our 32nd president, it is the worst of times. The course of history and the course of one president's life again shape a turning point in our national destiny. Franklin D. Roosevelt, paralyzed by polio, knows how to restore the faith of a people paralyzed by the Great Depression. I believe in practical exclamation and in practical thought. He has found the inner strength his countrymen now need. He speaks to us like a friend, a neighbor. His optimism is contagious, his voice perfect for the latest breakthrough medium, radio. He calls us to believe we have nothing to fear, but fear itself. And we do believe. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. I can hear you. The rest of the world hears you. Loving this country requires the willingness to speak out for what is right, to shake up the state. presidency is no longer just an idea. It is an idea with a proud history. Ladies and gentlemen, the presidents of the United States of America. George Washington. John Adams. Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, James Monroe, John Quincy Adams, Andrew Jackson, Martin Van Buren, William Henry Harrison, John Tyler, James K. Polk, Zachary Taylor, Millard Fillmore, Franklin Pierce, James Buchanan, 
Abraham Lincoln, Andrew Johnson, Ulysses S. Grant, Rutherford B. Hayes, James A. Garfield, Chester A. Arthur, Grover Cleveland, Benjamin Harrison, William McKinley, Theodore Roosevelt, William Howard Taft, Woodrow Wilson, Warren G. Harding, Calvin Coolidge, Herbert Hoover, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Harry S. Truman, Dwight D. Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, Lyndon B. Johnson, Richard M. Nixon, Gerald R. Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, George Bush, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, Barack Obama, Donald Trump, the present. Once again, we place our trust in the idea of a president, as we have from the beginning. My fellow citizens, no event could have filled me with greater anxieties than that notification on the 14th day of April, 1789, that you had selected me to lead our nation. But it was with the confidence of my fellow citizens that I took an oath. 35 simple words that have been repeated by every American president throughout history. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and I will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. The presidency of the United States is a role unique in the world, an office entrusted to each president by us, we the people. Therein lies the genius of that new idea, now over 200 years old. A new idea our presidents have turned into a great American idea again and again.
Germany and all that. Oh. Oh. Oh.
detail of and since the then, the Carousel of Progress has had more performances than any other stage show in the history of American theater. You know, Walt loved the idea of progress, and he loved the American family. And he himself is probably as American as anyone could possibly be. He thought it would be fun to watch the American family go through the 20th century, experiencing all the new wonders as they came. And he put them together in a show called Carousel of Progress, which we are now about to see. Although our Carousel family has experienced a few changes over the years, our show still revolves around the same theme, and that's progress. May the century begin. Yeah, it looks like the Robins are getting ready to celebrate Valentine's Day today. What year is it? Oh, right around the turn of the century. And believe me, things couldn't be any better than they are today. Yes, sir, buildings are towering now as high as 20 stories. And moving pictures flicker up on a big screen. We have almost 8,000 automobiles in this country, and we can travel by train from New York to California in less than seven days. And I even hear tell about two brothers from North Carolina who are working on some kind of flying contraption. <laughs> It'll never work. Closer to home, we've now got gas lamps, a telephone, and the latest design in cast iron stoves. And that reservoir keeps five gallons of water hot in just three buckets of coal. Oh, well, that sure beats chopping wood. And isn't our new ice box a beautiful? Yeah, it's almost 50 pounds of ice. Milk doesn't sour as quick as it used to. And our dog Rover here keeps the water in the drip pan from overflowing. It wasn't too long ago we had to carry water from a well. And thanks to progress, we've got a pump right here in the kitchen. Of course, we keep a bucket of water handy to prime it with. Yes, sir, we've got everything we need to make life easier. Say, Mother, I was reading about a fellow named Tom Edison who's working on an idea for snap-on electric lights. Electric lights? No more kerosene, no more gas. <laughs> Sarah sure gets the core of the apple. But we do have this new wash day marvel. Now it takes me only five hours to do the wash. Imagine, it used to take two days. Well, that's right, folks. Now Sarah has time for other things like... Like canning coming. and cleaning the oven. Yes, dear. Lovins well, don't just clean themselves, you know. I know, dear. <laughs> and they probably never will. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get the laundry off the line before it starts raining cats and dogs. <laughs> Oh, uh, don't worry, Rover. She didn't mean real dogs. Besides, it's not going to rain today. My lumbago isn't acting up. I'm not going to say I told you so. Oh, you gotta come down. All you have to do is put your wash on the line, right? Oh, well, the cistern was low anyway. Wow, wait, look at that. Now, James, I thought I told you to ask my permission before using my new stereoscope. It's not a toy, you know. Ooh, voila. Uh, uh. So that's the new Jimmy Dad? Isn't she a knockout? She's the star of the new World's Fair in St. Louis. And <clears throat> now, you put that away before your mother finds it. Oh, Dad. You heard me. Well, we have one of those new talking machines. Now, that is something. It plays music right here in our home. There's a great big she keeps that thing going all day long. Progress. Oh, Papa. Yes, Patricia? Papa, all these people. I'm, I'm indecent. <laughs> Don't worry, Patricia. They're friends. That's our teenage daughter. She's getting ready to go to a Valentine's dance across town on one of those new horseless trolleys. I think it's very romantic for taking Mother out for Valentine's Day. Well, you know what kind of sport I am. Now, you be home by 9 o'clock, daughter, you hear me? Oh, well, with all this talking, I've worked up quite a thirst. <laughs> I think I'll take one of those newfangled trolleys down to the drugstore soda fountain and meet the boys for a cold sarsaparilla. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot. We're drinking root beer now. Same kind of thing, different name. Well, that's progress for you. You boy, not as fourth of July we've had in years. We've come a long way, though, since the turn of the century, over 20-some-odd years ago. You know that pilot fellow, Charles Lindbergh? He's about to fly a single-wing airplane all the way across the Atlantic. <laughs> He's never going to make it. And sports stadiums are springing up all over. And boy, nobody hits that old horse hide 
like that new fellow Babe Ruth. Jazz music is the cat's meow. And there's been ads in the paper for months for a movie starring Al Jolson. And he's going to talk and sing. Oh, boy, I've got to see that. <laughs> there goes Schwartz in his upmobile. He sure loves that horn. You know, in my new Essex, I've got an electric starter. Now I don't have to crank. We can travel from New York to Los Angeles by train in only three days. And we've got a house full of new electrical servants. Mr. Edison sure added life to our home. Whoa there, you blew a fuse. Crap, that's the third one this week. I buy fuses by the case. Uh -oh. And I blow the whole neighborhood again. Easy, Rover. Jimmy, hurry up with that fuse. Shucks. Every time he has company, he blows a fuse. And guess who always has to change it? I heard that, young man. Sarah's Ladies Club is responsible for our town's 4th of July celebration tonight. She's got us all roped into performing in their program, and I... decided we're going as George and Martha Washington, dear. Oh, the father of our country. <laughs> That's a role that really fits me. You know, I'm I... so glad we installed an electric light fixture here on the porch because it's just too darn hot to be sewing inside. <laughs> yes, Sarah. You know, next year I'd like to go as Benedict Arnold and I... Wait until you see what I've got planned for the fireworks show tonight. Rover, don't it? I did, Pop. Listen to this. radio set, we can get news and big time entertainment from all over the country, even Pittsburgh. People are starting to arrive downtown for a spectacular 4th of July parade and fireworks event tonight. Mayor Pete, about Oh, Patricia. Yes, Father. Better get a move on. The radio says folks are arriving downtown. Well, dear, if that happens, you'll always have that torch you can carry for him. <laughs> Calm down, Rover. I was only kidding. By the way, we have indoor plumbing now. Oh, boy, that's really great on cold nights, especially for our perennial house guest, old Uncle Orville. <laughs> Uncle Orville's taken over the coolest spot in the house, of course, and he's rigged up a real clever contraption. He calls it air cooling. <laughs> Too bad he's not reading the help wanted ads. No privacy at all around this place. Sorry, Orville. You know, considering all the... Oh, coming, Martha, as I was saying. Considering all the conveniences we now have, I'll say that we're really on easy street these days. It just can't get any better. Well, it's another Halloween here in the fabulous 40s. Everything is better than ever now. And we've got some amazing new wonders around the house to prove it. For instance, our refrigerator holds more food and ice cubes. And thanks to our automatic dishwasher, oh, I don't have to dry the dishes anymore after supper. Gives Rover and me more time to enjoy our evening stroll together. <laughs> Later, boy. Oh, and here's something else that's new. I just heard a new turn today on the radio. Fella says, We've got something now called the rap race. Did you ever hear that one? It sure describes my life. I'm involved in something now called commuting. I drive into the city for work all day and then turn right around and drive all the way back. And the highway is crowded with fellow rats doing the same thing. That's what they call progress, dear. <laughs> yeah, I guess she's right. But we do have television <laughs> when it works. Gives you something to do after you come home. I kind of like it, you know? Guy named John Cameron Swayze gives us all the news. And then they have all the singing and dancing. A lot of fluff, but it's fun. You know, I predict the day when millions of people will learn Latin and Greek sitting in front of their TV sets. I know. Yes, a new age of electronic civilization is upon us. Hey, Dad, 
that? What do you think of my jack-o'-lantern? Oh, oh, boy, that's scary. That's because I'm using my beautiful sister Patty's picture for a model. <laughs> Down, Rover. Jim, Rover appreciates your joke. Now, you're always kidding poor Patty. She's certainly prettier than either of you. Oh. Hear that? My daughter Patty is using that old exercise machine she rescued from the attic. It was all a rage in the 20s. Grandma, of course, had to have one. Didn't work then, doesn't work now. <laughs> Consistent, at least. Makes a lot of noise and blows fuses. And I've been saying that. My big college is really swell. You should give it a try. Oh, Patty, I'm going to the housing party tonight. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to put those rubber inches by then. But I'm going to go back to three quotes under it. Well, friend, what a fun. He's coming at the headless horse now. They said about me when I was dating Sarah. <laughs> You're lucky, Rover. You don't have to date. Well, we're caught up in the do-it-yourself craze these days. We're remodeling our basement in something called a, a rumpus room, and we're looking forward to a few rumpuses, I'll tell you, as long as they don't get out of hand. John, this papering is getting out of hand. I could use a little help. Now, Sarah, didn't I set up that clever automatic paint stirring machine for you? Yes, John, you're a genius. Of course, this will ruin my food mixer. Not that you'd care. Oh, good old Sarah. Always the last <laughs> laugh. Sarah. Oh, you and your progress. That paint mixer of yours just sloshed paint across my room. A rumpus, a room. <laughs> How do you like that? I always say if you're going to be married, marry a girl with a sense of humor. Oh, turkey's in the oven. It's peaceful and quiet. Yes, 300 points. My best score yet. Well, it was peaceful until Santa brought that new virtual reality space pilot game. Your turn, Grandma. Let's switch the image over to the TV so the resident flying ace can show you how it works. Now, it's a little tricky. Just use your game glove to fly behind the other guy and blast him with your laser blaster. Laser blaster? Well, I'll give it a try. Take a look around, Grandma. You're in the ship. Feels like I'm really there. Okay, get ready. You're about to blast off. Here goes nothing. Whoa. All right, here it comes. Oh, you missed him. Everybody, I'm done programming our new voice activation system. Now all our household items will do anything we tell them to do. Great. Tell the refrigerator to bring me a root beer. <laughs> no, it can't quite do that. But I'll show you something it can do. Tree lights 30% brighter. <laughs> oh, that's no big deal. Anybody can do that voice activated stuff. Watch this. Roar! Speak! John, the oven should respond to your voice commands now. Give it a try. Oh, okay. Here goes. Temperature to 375. Temperature increase to 375. Look at that. It even talks back. It reminds me of certain people I know. Yeah, right, Dad. You gotta lose them, Grandma. Bang to the right. Remember Dad's turkey last year? Yeah, <laughs> that thing really smoked up the place when it burned, didn't it? We ended up microwaving frozen pizzas. Well, no need to worry about the turkey this year. Not with an oven that will do anything your father tells it to do. Ooh, good shot. Did you see that? Dad, Grandma's up to 550 points. Did you say 550? Hey, she's getting the hang of that five, thing. Five, five, I can't believe all the new gadgets they've got now. You know in my day, Oh, though. no. You're not going to tell us about the old days when you didn't even have a car phone. Hey, Trish, for a while we didn't even have a house phone. Not to mention laser discs, high-def TV, everything is automated today, including... Well, including that. No car change all around this place. <laughs> Sorry, Orville. Anyway, you guys don't know how good you got it nowadays. You know, my grandpa told me the very same thing when I was a kid. Take that, you nincompoop! Hey, check it out, Dad. Grandma's up to 975 points. Wow, 975? Temperature increase to 975. Big mode overload. Command. Error. John! 
What's yeah. wrong with the oven? What? Uh, uh. Make mode complete. Enjoy your meal. Anyone for pizza? Oh, another Christmas turkey ruined.
Walt Disney World at Magic Kingdom. I will see you tomorrow for day three.